Hello, this is Jeff Kubiak with Poly Products. I'd like to introduce you to the Poly Products 80 gallon per hour electrically heated tank evaporation system. This is the control panel, we'll go into detail on that. But this system has one tank with two evaporators and six electric heaters, three on this side, three on that side. Each heater is 36 kilowatts for a total of 216 kilowatts of heat input to maintain evaporation. This evaporation system basically consists of two evaporators with their own system. Each evaporator has its own feed pump delivering the 45 gallons per minute necessary to each evaporator. And that is regulated by this ball valve. We can throttle back the flow of this pump. And each pump also has a side stream to help agitate the tank. We can adjust that flow with this ball valve. The same system is on the other side. There are three 36 kilowatt heaters on this side. There are three heaters on that side. This is the junction box that feeds the power to each of the heaters, controlled by our main control panel. And again, the same setup is on the other side. On the other side of the heated tank system, these are the other three heaters, the three 36 kilowatt heaters you'll find on this side and the same setup on the other side. Here's the pump that's gonna feed the 45 gallons per minute to the evaporator. As we, as well as the throttling ball valve to regulate the flow to the evaporator, and also a T to help agitate the tank is on this side we, with the ball valve. This ball valve will help regulate the flow for agitation as well. We don't need much, just a gentle stir. Another junction box from the control panel to feed all three heaters. On this side is the main control panel. You'll also have in the center the temperature probe and level probes. The Poly Products evaporator is a very simple user-friendly system. It can evaporate all sorts of uh, plating solutions in various wastewaters including chrome and nickel. What's happening is the solution inside the tank is heated up and then brought to the evaporator through this pump, through this ball valve. The ball valve regulates the flow. We want 45 gallons per minute. Inside the evaporator in the yellow blower sleeve there's a spray nozzle. This yellow blower sleeve goes almost to the bottom. It's about 10 inches short of the bottom. It's spray making a nice spray pattern which mingles with the incoming air from the blower. This air comes in, gets very humid from the uh, solution being sprayed. The air makes a U-turn and comes up the other side. The air now is in a bigger area. The velocity is a little bit slower where it hits another spray nozzle in here. So the solution spray then hits the air again. The air is now at 100% relative humidity. The warmer that air is, the more water volume that air can hold. The higher the solution temperature, up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit maximum, the higher your evaporation rates. The humid air then leaves through the mist eliminator, which is located right here. This mist eliminator is a chevron bladed assembly to impinge water droplets out of the airstream. The only thing leaving the evaporator at this point should be humid air with very small microscopic droplets of solution, which would then be captured by the optional mesh pad that would sit right on top of the mist eliminator. The humid air then is collected in this plenum and is exhausted out of that 16 inch diameter exhaust duct, which then leaves the building through the roof or the wall. This is the control panel for the heated tank system. The logic and philosophies are the same as our other evaporation systems. Each uh, heater has its independent control switch. Under normal operation, you're going to turn everything to on or auto. Once everything is in on position or auto position, you simply hit the cycle start button, and if everything's okay, the system will start. This system is rated at 80 gallons per hour, so it has two evaporators. Each evaporator will produce 40 gallons per hour maximum. Each evaporator is independently controlled. You can um, have the switches in the off position for the blower and the feed pump, or you can put it in the hand position, which will operate it manually or by hand. That's the blower of evaporator number one. This is the pump of evaporator number one. Blower of evaporator number two, pump of evaporator number two. As a safety feature to protect the evaporator, because it's made of plastic, the solution temperature could be hot enough to hurt the plastic, 
unless the blower is on. The blower cools the solution right away. So for that reason, we do not allow the pump to go on without the blower at any time, even in manual or hand operation. The blower needs to be on to operate the pump. During normal operation, should you have a problem with a particular heater, say heater 4 is giving you problems, you can continue to evaporate, just turn heater 4 off. This is the temperature controller. Right now, the green numbers are indicating we are set to 160 degrees. System hasn't been heated up right now, so we're at 66.7 degrees Fahrenheit. 160 degrees is the maximum we could set the temperature. We can't go up any higher, but we can go lower. If you want to evaporate at a lower temperature, simply hit the down arrow button. Let's say we want to set it to 150. It's still flickering, and then we hit the set. It may still look like it's flickering on the video, but those are two solid illuminated lights. When you hit the set button, it locks it in. If you want to uh, experiment or you want to look at the over temperature set point, for example, we don't want to go uh, over 160 degrees ever. Right now there's a, a five degree trail. It'll, the alarm will follow the set point by five degrees. And we can see that by hitting the circle button and getting into the menu. These are all explained in the manual. But we want to go to alarm high temperature. Right now it's actually set to 2.9 degrees above the set point. So when it passes that threshold or when it gets to three degrees Fahrenheit beyond the set point, the high temperature alarm will sound. And we can, we can see this, we can lock it in if we change it. We can make it whatever we want. Again, I'm going to go back to 2.9 and then hit set and it locks it in. Hitting set again goes back to the normal display. So now I'm going to, head, I'm going to set it down to uh, uh, 63 degrees and the alarm will sound. It's going to take a moment or 61.7, you'll see what happens. Hit set, lock it in, we're more than three degrees over temp. We sound an alarm, beacon light is flashing, the operator can come over and see what's going on. If he wants to silence the alarm while he thinks about it, he hits the button labeled alarm silence. Now he can evaluate and say, oh, I'm over temperature. Whatever reason caused that, maybe somebody hit the buttons just like I did. So we're going to put that back up to something above our actual temperature. We'll make it, we'll make it uh, 80 degrees. Set, locks it in. Now we still have to acknowledge that we knew it was over temperature by hitting over temperature reset. That light goes off. This is the level probe uh, system. Uh, this cable is left intentionally long so we can service it. These are just test leads so we can power it up before uh, um, it leaves the system part of our factory acceptance test. So this is not the normal. But this probe can be removed so that you can service, clean, clean these probes. There are four positions, five probes. This is the common probe. It must always be in the solution for these others to work. When this probe is exposed, that means the level is lower than this probe. This is the low level alarm. This probe is a common probe. It's used to turn the pump on, the refill pump on. So when this pump, when this probe is exposed, the pump comes on. And it'll come on until this probe gets wet. This probe gets wet, it shuts the pump off. So the level stays between these two probes. If for some reason the level goes higher, it'll get this probe wet and that'll be our high, high level alarm. It'll shut the system off and sound an alarm. We can test the probes by just dipping them in the water without the bracket. So the common goes in, the low level uh, probe is uh, now submerged, pump on, pump off, and now I'm about to submerge the high level alarm. And if you fix the problem and the level is now appropriate, the problem goes away. The heated tank system has a sloped bottom. It's a gentle slope. That's the high side and it slopes down towards the drain, which is on this side. The drain is what would feed the filter press if you purchased a filter press with the system. If you found this video helpful and informative, please subscribe and hit like.